Now I just got back to my land and what do I find waiting for me but this. Maine was hit with a massive rain and windstorm last December. I wasn't here for it, but I did see the pictures on the news and social media, and it looked apocalyptic. We're talking absolutely biblical. Down along the coast, they had massive flooding, and some areas were reporting 100 mile an hour winds. Up here, it didn't get nearly that bad, but there was a weather station nearby that reported 70 mile an hour gusts of wind, which is just under a category one hurricane. That might not sound like a lot if you're from Florida, but up here in Maine, you know, you got to remember the most extreme weather we get is, uh, you know, negative 20 degree temperatures in the winter. Other than that, we don't really get much. So 70 mile an hour winds is pretty intense here. So all winter, I was pretty anxious to see what damage there would be on my woodlot. I knew there would be some. Uh, I knew the stand was at high risk for blowdown. And on my way up, I was just seeing down trees all along the highway, all along the roads. To be honest, I think the power company is still cleaning up. So I knew there was going to be something. And so when I got here and I saw this, I was pretty happy. This little bunch of three trees that fell on top of each other and one more white spruce that broke halfway up about mm, a thousand feet that way, that was the extent of the damage across all my land. And the reason that makes me so happy is that one of the main objectives of this harvest was to protect the stand from wind throw. Now, before I started the harvest, I made a video explaining my silvicultural thought process and why I was doing the things I was. So if you wanna go watch that for a more in-depth explanation, you can follow the link here or in the description below, and I encourage you to do so. But basically, this entire forest was at high risk of mortality through wind events. It's primarily composed of two species, balsam fir and quaking aspen, and both of those species are known for being relatively short-lived and also very vulnerable to wind. The problem was, usually you find these species more in an even age structure, meaning they're all in um, the same age, more or less. In this case, you actually had a multi-age structure. You had some areas with mature balsam fir and aspen and some areas where you still had some young pole-sized balsam fir growing vigorously. Now the mature fir in particular were in very rough shape. They were rotting from the inside out. In some cases, they were standing dead. Uh, you already had some fallen over trees. It was pretty bad. They needed to be harvested, but the other areas, not so much. Like I said, they were still growing vigorously. Now this presented a very unique and to me intriguing problem. The stand needed to be harvested, but with a full scale harvest, we would have come in here and punched in trails that would have totaled around 20% of the overall area. Those trails would have opened up the entirety of the stand to much more risk. You would have had root damage, you would have had more open space, and both of those things would have led to more mortality of the more vulnerable individuals. So I just wouldn't have been able to come in with normal equipment. It wouldn't have worked. I only had two options. I could clear cut the entire thing, or I could just leave it be and let it grow. Both options would have been wasteful. If I would have left it, then those areas of mature fir would have died out by the time the rest was um, ready to harvest. If I would have clear cut it, I would have robbed all those vigorous and healthy trees of their most productive growing years. So to me, this was a perfect subject to experiment and test small scale harvesting methods. If I could come in here and make as minimal trail impact as possible, I could selectively target those patches of balsam fir that needed to be harvested. And I could even thin out some of those areas of the vigorous fir and aspen to make them even more productive going forward. So I could effectively get the best of both worlds. I could capture the mortality of those mature fir and sell them to the mill, and also enhance the productivity of the overall forest. And while operationally I ended up having a lot of issues with rain that slowed me down tremendously, silviculturally, after this windstorm, I think I can say that it was a resounding success. The vast majority of the stand was completely untouched. Does that mean this wasn't an error? No. I messed up here. This was my bad. When I was going through here marking timber, um, I could only really see the ground. It was still dense enough that I couldn't quite see the tops of the trees. So I was mostly going on what the stems looked like. After all, there was a lot of fur with, you know, rot that was visible from the outside, holes, etc. So if I had a nice straight bowl and it didn't seem to have any outwardly appearing defects, I wanted the tree to stay unless it was in an overly crowded area. But as soon as we started cutting, I started to realize that in certain areas, like right here especially, 
um, the, the tops of the trees, the crowns, weren't as healthy as they appeared from the ground. You could see a lot of defoliation and just uh, stagnant growth, etc. The reason that's a problem is because normally when you're opening up a stand in a thinning or a selection harvest or some sort of partial harvest, you are inherently, even with the smallest of equipment, exposing the stand to more risk because those trees were relying on each other to kind of keep themselves stable against wind and snow, etc. And by thinning out that stand, by making it, by reducing the density, you are inherently increasing the risk, even with the most wind sound species. But that risk is only present for really five years at most, because what's going to happen is those trees are going to respond. They're going to start putting on a horizontal growth and the crowns are going to close in those spaces that were created during the harvest. But if the tree is at the end of its life, its growth is very slow or even worse, it's not growing at all, that is not going to happen. You are just going to have an increased amount of risk in that stand in perpetuity. And as soon as the trees start falling over, those gaps are only going to keep increasing, which are going to further increase risk. So those few balsam fir around here that have the bad crowns, there was no reason I should have left them standing. I should have made this a group in my group selection to remove, much like I did in other areas successfully where I didn't see any blowdown. Now, luckily this is a very isolated problem. This area with this problem, uh, we're probably talking a half an acre, maybe. It's very small and isolated. Um, so it's not a huge issue. That said, I do have some choices to make. I can either keep those first standing and hope maybe they uh, spread some seed before they inevitably fall down and then I can just capture them when they fall. Or I can just do another micro harvest, maybe take three more trees and go from there. Now, normally that might be a problem because, um, you know, a few trees wouldn't be enough to create a truckload of wood that I could actually sell to a mill. So for most people, uh, they'd really have no choice but either to either just leave this on the ground or to burn it for firewood. But this, I'm actually kind of fortunate because this year I am purchasing a small sawmill because I want to get into that world. I want to, you know, experiment and dabble with it a little bit. Uh, so I have a mill on its way to me right now. So this is a great opportunity. These trees aren't going to go to waste. I'm just going to process them like I would to the logs I'm going to sell to the mill, but I'm going to make them into my own lumber. So we'll see how that goes. Now that said, I haven't exactly made up my mind as to what I'm going to do right here, whether I'm going to harvest those trees that I should have harvested to begin with, or just let nature take its course and deal with the consequences as they come. I think right now I'm leaning towards harvesting them, but I'll probably wait until later in the growing season when the trees around them have had one extra season to kind of reduce that risk from the openings around them. But in either case, I do have plans for these trees right here. So if you wanna see what is to come, uh, go ahead and subscribe and I'll have more coming your way. So that's all for now. I'll catch you later.